Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Good evening. Normally I'm saying good morning, so I thought for sure I should say good evening this evening. I will wait a few minutes just to let you guys all get on before we get started. I'm so excited about this class because I love these cards and well, a couple days ago, it was like real feel of 100, and um, tonight I wore a fleece jacket and was freezing cold, and I just want to like snuggle up and, well, all day I wanted to snuggle up and take a nap. Um, right now, I just want to snuggle up and go to bed. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is crazy cold out there now. And I mean, it's not crazy cold because let's be honest, it's the fall and it's Illinois. Um, but it's like 60 degrees and going from like a real feel of 100 to 60 and it's rainy too, like spit rainy, like that gross, like nah, where it's like cold and rain. Yeah, um, it's that. So it's really gross um, and not, not nice out. So let me know what the weather's like in your area. Is it warmer? I would love to hear that because I do like warm weather. Um, and, and yeah, I'd love to hear about that, but, um, we are going to get started here in a second. This is the, um, September online card class, uh, using the Hello Harvest bundle and lots of the items in the Rustic Harvest suite. It's from the June to July mini catalog, um, and it's actually currently unavailable. I really hate that. Um, so I'm hoping all of you guys that got the kits um, got your uh, stamps and dies already before it went unavailable. Maybe that's why it went unavailable because all of you guys did that. Um, but yeah, it is currently unavailable and hopefully coming back in the next couple of weeks. Chili in Delaware, down to the 40s. Oh, that's really cold. But yeah, I think like, and then tomorrow, I think the high is 83. Like, what the heck, Illinois? So crazy. So, so crazy. Um, but anyway, I do still have some card kits left um, of this one. Um, I don't think I left that link in the description. So let me know in the comments if you still would like a pre-cut card stock pack um, with the um, with the uh, tutorial. If you just want to do the PDF tutorial, um, then you can click on the link. I did put that link in the description. Um, then you can get that off of my Etsy shop. You can also get it here. Um, if you can read that, it's etsy.com slash shop slash Laura's stamp pad. Um, so you can check that out there. So Let's go ahead and get started so that we um, aren't keeping our East Coasters up too late and because um, we all know Claire will be down at some point to say goodnight too. So um, hopefully she's not like, I want to stamp. Um, but anyway, so I am Laura with Laura's Stamp Pad and we are doing the September 2022 online card class. So this is free for anyone. So share, like, comment, um, let your friends all know that they can join in tonight or do um, the rewatch later. And we are using the Hello Harvest stamp set. Um, I used every single image out of this stamp set for these five cards. So I super love when I do that because then I really feel like I'm getting the most out of my stamp set. So um, I have some great uh, tips and tricks to share with you um, regarding some of the images. And I'm also super love, love, loving these three images here. They're so fun for the insides of cards to do like little decorations and stuff. Like I swear I just want to like leave them right here on the edge of my desk just to grab for any sort of card because um, they are super, super fabulous. Hi, Karen. Welcome from South Dakota. There's also um, dies that coordinate with this. I set the dies here. It's the rustic pumpkin dies. Um, but I actually have them all in here because we will be using them tonight. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am going to be doing the um, crushed curry. I don't even know where to set these. I'm going to be doing the crushed curry um, card first. So if you have the um, card kit, 
uh, then you can go ahead and get out the supplies for the crushed curry card. Uh, this one is four and a quarter by 11. I really like to go um, up and down whenever I tie ribbon side to side. Sometimes I tie ribbon side to side and go all the way to the inside of the card. Um, and sometimes I just do it on the layers. So knowing that I wanted to tie the ribbon around, I went ahead and did a four and a quarter by 11 because it's less ribbon to go around four and a quarter than it is to go around five and a half. So that's why I do that. And every once in a while, it's just kind of fun to do a different style of card. So this is kind of like a, um, a tent card, sort of um, like TP tent. I don't know how you would call that. Um, but it just goes um, portrait rather than landscape. So I'm going to set the sample over here. Pull out all of my goodies. This one is super, super simple. Um, I let the designer series paper do all of the hard work for me. Um, and you'll also notice that your designer series paper is a little bit too big. And that's because I wanted you guys to be able to decide how you wanted to do it. So um, this piece of designer series paper is, um, it's a 12 by 12 and the whole bottom, this is a six inch piece, six by four. So the whole bottom is like all these flowers with um, butterflies like staggered around. As you can see, this is a different piece um, from the pack. And, um, and then the flip side is that same thing. So it's like this. And then there's kind of like this black, like middle section that's kind of, on this side, kind of womp womp. Um, on the other side, it's this fabulous pattern. Um, so I went ahead and I cut all of these pieces four by six so that you could decide whether you wanted to cut off the top or whether you wanted to cut on the bottom. Or you can also cut a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Depending on where your butterfly is, you might wanna do a little bit of both or you might be okay just cutting on the bottom. Um, you could also put your greeting up here in this spot, or you could put your greeting down here in this spot. So again, there's like lots of different ways that you might want to do this. So I'm actually going to, I want to keep my butterfly for sure. So I'm just going to cut a smidge off the top. And I just kind of looked to see that I wasn't going to cut my butterfly. And then now I'm just going to make sure it's five and a quarter. So I'm going to line it up with five and a quarter, and then whatever else is left is going to get cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. So that's a little tip for, um, for why I gave you guys a four by six piece because each piece was a little bit different and I didn't know whether you wanted to cut off the greenery at the bottom or the top. And, um, and of course each butterfly was like higher and lower and all over the place. Um, so yeah, that was all um, a personal preference. The other thing is, is I just tossed my piece. Um, you could always use your piece, flip it over and use the inside, um, like the other pattern. Let me grab it. You could use the other pattern and do that as um, like an inside little like decorative piece. I do that a lot of times um, with leftover designer paper. I didn't do it for this one because I kind of did like a super skinny piece, but um, but yeah, you could always do that as well. Good evening, Colleen. Welcome from Michigan. Is it really cold up there? I feel like all of you guys live in like chilly, like northern areas. So whenever I talk about it being cold, you're probably laughing at me like she's just a baby. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and layer our designer series paper onto our Mary Merlot. And just so you know, it's really tight because it's only an eighth off. I just went for that real small little edging. So it's just an eighth, not the normal quarter that I normally do. And then I have a little bit of linen thread and I'm gonna wrap it around a few times and tie it into a bow. And by a few, I mean two, even though it looks like on my sample I did three. But if I'm going to do a bow, there's no way I'm going to get that third one. Okay, so for linen thread, I always do a double knot and then I tie my bow because it just makes it so much easier to not have to worry about having it nice and tight um, on my card. So I can get it nice and tight, double knot, I can let go. And then like I usually kind of try to angle these a little bit like a crisscross. 
and you want your bow um, or your knot, you can leave it as a knot, um, off to the side so that your greeting can go on the other side. So now I'm just going to do loop, wrap around, and into a bow. And we'll trim our tails. And now this piece can go onto our card front. I am going to use tear and tape. Um, you could also use dimensionals. Um, I like to use tear and tape or like a strong adhesive when I am doing um, something that has like ribbon because it's kind of bumpy and I don't want that ribbon to like make my adhesive pop. So I definitely want a nice strong adhesive that's going to hold really well. I also like to use dimensionals because then um, one, it holds really well because that foam goes into the, um, it goes into the linen thread and sort of smooths it out and doesn't make it like bumpy. Um, but you could do whatever you want. I did the greeting popped up on dimensionals. So rather than double dimensionaling, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I went ahead and did this on flat. Highs in the 60s, good mowing weather. Yes, um, we mowed, uh, or Brad, I shouldn't say we, um, Brad mowed yesterday, and it was much cooler than it was earlier this week. Hi, Denise, happy Friday. Again, um, this one's gonna be another tight one because it's just an eighth of an inch versus the normal quarter that I do. And I'm just pressing down nice and firm over where that adhesive is. And then now we're going to use um, our double oval punch, but you can also use any punch of your choice or any sort of die cut label or anything. So I did, um, I did crushed curry for my scallop. And then I also did white. Ooh, I don't want to do this piece because I'm going to end up with two of them. Let me see if I have a smaller scrap like this, this little leftover. Perfect. Normally I stamp first, so I'm going to wing it and um, see how it goes. And if it's not good, then um, I'll stamp again because that's how that goes. Ah. So I'm using Cajun Craze as my ink and I am stamping You Are Missed. So this one is super cute. Um, I think this card would be great for my niece who has gone off to college. Um, it could be to, oh wait, I don't know why I'm inking it up again. We're just going to stamp that over there and toss this aside because I don't think I'm using this one again. Um, and then I'm going to uh, stamp on the inside. You are missed. Also great for like maybe a grandparent or a, um, a relative that doesn't live you know, close by or anything, or a sibling or anything like that. Um, so just like a cute little card. Um, if someone is unable to attend Thanksgiving or a family reunion this fall, you could always send it to them. Okay, so now I'm using those super fun filigree things. And um, I'm going to do one of these two on the corner and then these like in the middle. And I just want to say that um, whenever I first did this, I freaked out a little. And I was like, how am I going to line up that lined image along the edge that it's going to match up on the opposite side? And you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to line it up. And it's going to be okay. And you're not going to notice. And I don't think anyone else will notice either. And just wing it. Just do it and it will be perfectly fine. So I did one along this side, I did one along this side, and then on the bottom and on the top. Okay, right, I just won it. I just did it, I just had fun. Now, are they perfectly lined up? Absolutely not. Okay, they're actually kind of close. But again, I find I find that when I wing it, I do much better than if I'm really steady. Like, I'll be honest, when I was doing it like up here and not like over top of it, I was really nervous and I thought, well, this is just going to be a hot mess, but I'm telling them all that it's so cool. Um, and like, I did a better job winging it than I did if I would have concentrated. So 
Just do it. If they're off a little, no one is going to notice. It's just a fabulous design that doesn't need to be perfect. So don't freak out about that. Just wing it and it'll be absolutely fabulous. Yeah, this adhesive sounds funky. Okay, we're gonna grab another one. I was waiting for it to not work because it wasn't like advancing. So this goes on the inside. This is my normal quarter inch, so no craziness there. And we have our greeting. The other thing is, is we're going to use those fun little filigree things on the inside of all of these cards. So you're going to get used to it and, um, and you're going to wing it too. And it's going to be fabulous. So don't worry whatsoever. Denise, is it hot down there where you are? I know you're towards the south. Hi, Julie from Utah. Kathy, Judy. It's handmade, not Hallmark. Exactly. I love it, Kathy. I love it. So this is just going to go off to the right-hand side. You'll notice this one went off to the left-hand side. So it just kind of was where my ribbon ended. Um, and, of course, I could have, like, rotated it around, but... Um, I also don't really care. It could be on the left or the right. And then I'm just going to finish this off with some rustic metallic um, dots. And I'm using my take your pick tool, the putty tip. And we will add one big one right here and then two little ones. One up there and this one maybe on the greeting. How about that? So you can see I have that little like bow over here, the you are missed. Those just add a little bit of texture. I could have added one like up by the butterfly too and that would have been super fabulous. And then there's the inside. Isn't that so amazing? I just absolutely love it. And then there's um, the original. And oh, that one I did um, a different filigree. So you can kind of do either one. And you could even turn this one out too, but it doesn't matter. But we also have to stamp our envelope. So we're gonna do the little filigree on the back lip. And then I'm also going to do the filigree on the front. but just in the one corner because the stamp goes in the other corner. So it'll just kind of like border it out very fabulously. So there is card number one. Oh, so fabulous. Of course, I'll be asking you guys which one your favorite is. So you guys can all vote for card number one and give it all the love um, here in the beginning. And then, um, and then you can decide once card number two comes. So there is card number one from the um, card class. It's 90 degrees and it's supposed to be mid 90s this weekend. Well, you know, that's Texas for you. <laughs> um, but that sounds amazing right now. I would totally take uh, 90 degrees. Um, okay, we're going to do the next one we're going to do um, has a super cute little tea bag. Um, I'm doing this one next. It wasn't what I intended to do next, but I already have my Cajun craze out. So I kind of just feel like let's just keep the Cajun craze um, going. So this one is super duper cute because it's got a little tea bag in there. I have some of my um, little throat coat. I love using this anytime my um, allergies act up and I get that like sore throat from the drainage. This stuff is amazing. Um, but I have tonight, I have also Twining's English breakfast tea. Um, and I love this one because it matches. It looks Cajun craze. What, um, what I ended up getting was this Twining's black tea variety pack. And so it's got a lot of great colors that kind of match that, um, that like fall look. There's the Earl Grey. There's like an orangey um, one too with the Lady Grey. I've never heard of that one. The other one, um, these red and greens would also look really good with a Christmas look too. 
Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a great um, tea idea to go with your cards, then the Twinings Black Tea Variety Pack. I will advertise for them a little. <laughs> so um, you'll be moving to Colorado next year? Well, this will be your last hot summer, so soak it all up. And well, now it's fall. Um, soak it up and take it with you to Colorado. <laughs> So for this card, uh, if you have the um, the card pack, it is the um, the tall mossy meadow one. So the there is another mossy meadow card, um, but it is a like short and stumpy like normal card. This one is another one of those um, four and a quarter by eleven cards. Yes, isn't that rustic harvest paper pack just absolutely stunning? I am loving it as well, Colleen. So this one, we're going to go ahead and fold our Mossy Meadow in half. And that is our card base. And then the pocket piece is this Cajun Craze, and I've already um, scored it. So this is going to be like our front panel as well as that pocket. Um, so that's already been pre-scored and everything ready to go for you. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, about the card packet, um, I do have pre-cut card um, kits so that you can stamp right along with me. I do still have some of those kits available. I think I have like two, maybe three. Um, maybe, maybe three. I could probably whip up a third one. There's like some pieces on the floor. So I feel like there's, um, there could be a third one down there. Um, so yeah, I still have those. I can get that out to the mail to you and then you can rewatch this video or... Um, just follow along with the um, with the tutorial that you'll get with that. So the black and white striped paper goes on the top part. So it has that nice little quarter inch um, border all around. And then the pumpkin piece goes on that bottom piece um, for the pocket. Now you could always switch those out and do it differently if you wish. Um, you Or you could do pumpkins on the top and the bottom, or you could do stripes on the top and the bottom. So um, that's all up to you. I love that this paper has that black and white because black and white is classic. You could add color to it with blending brushes or markers, um, or you could use it as black and white with a pop of color, but it's good for all seasons. So whatever you don't use during the fall, you could then use the leftovers as the black and white for any other season. And that to me makes it so versatile and so fabulous because then you can use it all the time. Okay, so technically for my sample, I didn't actually adhere down my pocket. I just tied my um, linen thread around and that's what's holding it closed. But um, whenever I told everyone at class in person about that, uh, they all looked at me like I was crazy and they all went ahead and used tear and tape. So you can do whatever you want. I'll go ahead and use tear and tape for this one. You'll just notice it looks a little bit more secure or more like flat um, than if it was um, if it was not laid down. I love tear and tape because you can just rip it with your fingers. You don't have to worry about using scissors and getting your scissors all gunky from, you know, like a gummy tape or anything. So I just did it on those outside edges. You don't want to go in too far, otherwise you're not going to be able to put your little um, tea bag in there. So I just went on the outside edges there, and then now you have that little pocket. You could always stick some money in there. You could stick a gift card in there, or of course you could stick um, the little tea bag, um, but that's all up to you. Now, before we put this on, um, I am going to um, put on the twine. Now, I did run out of this, or the thread. I did run out of the linen thread, and thank goodness I had more arrive in today's order. Otherwise, I was gonna have to steal from some of those packets. Um, so it looks like this one doesn't have linen thread, possibly because I already stole from it. Oh no, I can't find the end. I swear the end is right here, but yeah, there it is. Okay, so I can either go straight off of the spool or I used a bow. So if I'm gonna do my bow on this side, then I kind of just go a little off on this side 
and then I wrap around and come back and go a little off on this side. And that's how I measure how much I need to be able to do this. And of course, once I have my first one, then I use that. I like unwrap it and use that as um, my guide to be able to do the rest of them. And again, I kind of like to like stagger them out, crisscross them a little. And then tie our bow. All my bow lovers out there are probably having a heyday today with all these bows, um, but feel free to do a knot if you wish. And trim the ends. And so now that we have that, we can add this to our card front. And again, since it's kind of like a working mechanism, I like to use tear and tape. I really like to use tear and tape a lot in case you haven't noticed. Um, it's not like one that I use like for every single card, um, but I just like to use it when I wanna make sure I'm secure, whenever I have like a linen thread or baker's twine um, or like a working mechanism. Like if it's something that like is going to be hanging off, um, for example, card number five tonight, um, we'll be using some tear and tape because of like a, a fun fold wiggle thing. Um, so we'll be using tear and tape. As always, I'm an adhesive over user. I probably didn't need that there in the middle, but why not? What is your guys' favorite adhesive? Do you like a runner tape? Do you like um, do you like something like this where you peel off the back? The other major thing I want to say with this is this one is going to go flush with the bottom of the card front. So if anything, you could either go to the bottom and make it flush and then just lay up, or you could do that nice um, all three sides look even from the top and then just lay it down towards the bottom. So again, I'm just going to press really hard with all of those spots and pop in my little tea bag. And then now we're going to do the banner for this. So yeah, let me know what is your guys's favorite adhesive. And with this banner, I do wanna show you, um, because I already have it set up like this, I am actually going to die cut the banner first, and then I'm going to stamp it. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So this is just a fun little trick. Um, so for example, if you um, don't want to mess up your, your die cut, like say you stamped it first, which is what I traditionally do. Stamp it first, line up the die, hope the die doesn't move, and run it through to die cut it. So if you do that and then it ends up moving and you're like, gosh darn it, I had just stamped that. Now I have to stamp it again and line it up perfectly, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, or if for some reason someone is like helping you, like your fabulous husband or friend, they're like, hey, I'll do some die cutting for you and then you can stamp. But if you're not like doing all that at the same time, then what you can do is you can take that reverse image and your Stamparatus. And so you'll take the reverse. What I did was I set my stamp down. So I set my stamp down onto my Stamparatus pad, stamped it, and lifted it. And then I took my reverse image from die cutting, just the first one. You don't need to do this for everyone. So you would then set this down perfectly over that stamped image. And then now it's like a cookie cutter and you're just gonna set it in and place it back into, or a puzzle maybe I should say, set it back into that puzzle and ink up our stamp again and then close it. And now you have that perfectly stamped die cut image no funky borders, no like the die moved on me, nothing like that. 
pop it out and you could always set in another one and another one and another one if you were making multiples of this, which is excellent for like holiday card making um, or making invitations for something or just your general stamping because it's super easy. You like green glue? I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I um, am not a fan of liquid glue. I'll just say that right now. Um, liquid glue scares me because I'm an overuser. And so, yeah, I end up going like, and then, um, and then I have way too much. So liquid glue is not usually my favorite. Hi, babe. Do you want to say hi to all of our friends? Say hi. Okay, go have fun reading stories, okay? What, what friends do you have? My friends, um, my friends Julie and Kathy and Judy and Colleen and Denise and Karen. Judy. And yeah, and Laura. Yeah, it's that, not. That's you. Yeah, that's me. I know. Okay. A different Laura. A different Laura. Yeah, she lives in Delaware. We don't live in. Delaware. We don't live in Delaware. Okay. We live in co college. We live in college. Oh, okay. Okay. Go read stories with Daddy. Mama. I love you. Night night. Yes, yeah. I'm still eating my snack. Oh, you're still eating your snack. How wonderful. I love you. So yes, back to um, favorite glues. Um, liquid is usually not my favorite because I tend to use too much. Um, dimensionals would probably be my favorite if you want to call that an adhesive. I mean, it technically is, um, but otherwise, uh, I mean, Everything is not done with dimensionals. I wish it was though. And sometimes I do do a lot of dimensionals. Um, but otherwise, I don't know what my favorite adhesive technically is. Oh great, my comments aren't coming in. Adhesive runner tape. Ah, oh, you guys are so sweet. Claire loves whenever you guys all say hello. <laughs> we don't live in college, but okay. We do have a college in town though, so maybe that's what she was talking about. Who knows? But anyway, there's our greeting, the wishing you the loveliest day um, up top. Hi, Angie. Welcome, and thank you so much for the stars. I appreciate that. So there we have the front of our card, and then, of course, the inside of our card um, has that little white panel, and you guessed it. We are going to stamp. I don't know. What did I do on this one? So this one I just did the little four corner things. Um, but I'll do it different on this card just to mix it up. Since I used that on the last one, then I will use this one on this card. Okay, so there we have that. I appreciate the stars sent. It really means a lot to me. You guys are so sweet. There's one last thing that I want to share with you guys um, on this card that I was like, I don't know whether I want to do it, whether I don't want to do it. It's such a tough decision. Um, so I had actually punched out um, or die cut out one of the pumpkins from this same set. So I thought about like adhering it just to the corner. Like for example, I think I'll just go ahead and do it on this one. I'm just going to add a dimensional right there on the corner of the tea bag and I'm going to add this pumpkin right on the corner of the tea bag. So it's just like a little handle. So now I'm just going to slide the tea bag in and let that pumpkin sort of hang out like out of the pocket. So it's like a little like side decoration and then what you would do is you would grab that pumpkin and pull out your tea bag. So you kind of have a cute decorated tea bag. And it just adds a little bit of more pumpkin to your card. Or you could always like, of course, this one, my ribbon kind of went off to the side or my bow did. Um, and then this one, it's kind of like dead center. So I don't know that I would do it on this one. Plus the twinings just matches and it looks oh so fabulous. Um, so yeah, I'm not so sure I would do it on um, on this one. Ooh, ooh, not that one. I don't want that one. I think this one, I might just do that and here. 
Okay, so that's super off center, but I did one little one um, on the back lip, and then um, and then I did the four corners on the front, and you have that adorable card with the coordinating envelope. You're an overuser with glue too. I love it. Good. I'm not the only one. You like the pumpkin idea? I know. I'm so back and forth. I'm like, I like it. It's too much. It's too big. It's, it takes it over. It like overshadows the designer paper, but then I'm like, it's so cute and it adds so much. And it's like when you pull out the, um, the little tea bag, it's like fabulous. So yeah, I'm kind of back and forth on whether I like it or not. So you guys can vote. Um, do you like the pumpkin or would you leave it off? Pumpkin, yay or nay. And then um, we, of course, have card number two is the pumpkin. And card number one is the flower. So now you can cast your vote on whether you like the flower or the pumpkin. Um, okay, we're actually going to leave this out yet one more time because we need it for one of the cards here. So the next card we're going to do is uh, this fabulous early espresso card. So if you have the card kit, you can get out your um, early espresso set. So the card base is early espresso. And the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to stamp your leaf. Stamp your leaf immediately. I actually stamped mine this afternoon, um, and I stamped it in early espresso ink. Where is my early espresso? Stamp it and set it aside because I feel like there's like a little, I don't know, waxy film, shininess, I don't know what it is. There's something over the leaf that makes it take forever to dry, and then it will smudge. So, like, I don't know if you can tell, but, like, the one in my left hand, like, looks, like, dry, and it looks, like, a little bit lighter, and you can see that the other one is, like, still wet, and, like, like, it looks puddly, almost. So... If you are doing this um, right now and you finish assembling it with your hello, then one, like I said, set it off to the side to let it dry. Um, and two, you can also use your heat tool on setting one and sort of speed it up a little bit. So, but definitely do that, set it aside and, um, and have that done. Julie, you're a no-go on the pumpkin. You know, it's it's perfectly fine. I think we have like what one vote for the pumpkin, one vote for no pumpkin. So, um, oh, off on off. I love them both. Oh, well, there's a lot of people that like it and a lot of people that don't. But so that's personal preference. So for this card, uh, you're gonna take that four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece, and um, I embossed it. You can use the embossing folder of your choice. I use the gingham embossing folder. Um, I went ahead and I embossed this um, before I started class only because I had to use my big um, my big boss, which is over there, and I didn't want to have to haul it onto the table. Um, it's so fabulous to use the mini here for the class and just have it right here on my table. Um, I love that. So, um, so yeah, it works out really well. And, um, and so I went ahead and I die cut that now but you could use there's so many awesome like texture ones that you could use for this and like I said I use the gingham folder you could use whichever folder you like then I'm going to rip the top and the bottom now I know a lot of people like freak out over this and they're like what do you mean rip it how do I rip it um, I mean exactly that. You're just going to rip it along. So now like I, I want you um, to rip towards yourself so that it has that rough, um, like soft edge on the top. And you want to make sure that you rip towards yourself on both sides and don't flip it over so that one is towards yourself and one is away. Although really it wouldn't matter, but um, 
but I'm just giving you that tip. And you don't want to rip it in one full swoop. You just kind of, and you don't really want to like munch and rip off. You want to keep it like a nice, like long piece. And yeah, just, just a small little tear. Now I will say for, um, for this one, uh, I was too lazy and um, I didn't know whether I was going to like it or not. And I kind of liked it, but I also kind of thought it was a little dark. I just took the cardstock and just like ran it through my ink pad. And so it's very dark. I did it again with my sponge dauber and I really like that look a little bit better. So um, I got up and got my sponge dauber and did it again. And um, and I like the the softer look of of the sponge dauber. So I'm just kind of brushing the edges. That's pretty dark too, but it's like a different, it's like a, a brushed dark versus a like, I don't know, painted dark or like a splotchy dark. I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, so there I did both the top and the bottom. So this is just going to give it some fabulous texture. And, um, and I love a good texture on my card. It really like makes it like 3D or like it really makes it pop. So let's back it up a little bit. Let's fold our card base in half. It's hard for you to rip on purpose. Now that I get 100%. Oh, that's how that happened. I just got ink on my envelope and I saw another envelope that had like a little ink splotch on it and I thought, well, how did that happen? And it was just like this. Okay, so then we're gonna take our designer series paper and add it to the bottom. One of the other things that I found really weird about this paper pack slash this card in, or this class in general was I use both white and vanilla. And, um, and yeah, I know that that might like come as a shock and be super weird. Uh, it is, it is super weird. Like this, this card I used vanilla. The last two cards I used white because technically the back side is white, um, which that is also white and I needed to grab a vanilla piece. I have vanilla right here. Here we go. Um, so yeah, you, like I find vanilla to be like softer and nice for like fall and things like that, um, more rustic-y looking. Um, and now I'm out of adhesive. Oh, this one's not going to last long, but anytime I like I do a class or something, I feel like one class it's all brand new adhesives, the next class they're all running out. So this is going to be the class that they all run out even though I'm the only one using them. So we're just gonna overlap that yellow, just a hair, yellow designer paper. I love that pop of yellow, it's just so fabulous. And then we can also add our twine around the spine of the card. And this time I did go ahead and go around the five and a half. Ooh, I stole this from one of the other cards and it is not going to work. So I'm just gonna go get my, I did cut, cause I had plenty for the kits that I have already sent out, um, but then I ran out, so. I'm gonna go around, I guess just twice. And we'll stop up high so that I can still do my bow, but then I'm going, like I'm technically at the bottom, so I will have to rotate this around. It is a soft color. Like I like white for that like bold, like, hi, I'm white and I'm clean and I'm fresh. Um, and I don't typically use vanilla except for like, I don't know, like Christmas cards, fall cards. Otherwise, like I want that, like those bright, bold colors and I want white. So in order to move this up, I'm just squeezing my card, grabbing my knot and my bow and like rotating it up to the top. And then spread them out just a hair. 
So there we have our card base. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stamp a pumpkin onto the scrap crushed curry and we're going to, or Cajun craze, Cajun craze, and I'm going to stamp it in Cajun craze and then we'll die cut that out. And then I actually stamped the florals in early espresso and then we'll die cut that out. Okay, I think we're officially done with this one, so I'm putting it away before I end up getting ink everywhere. So here we have our pumpkin. I'm gonna bring in my mini. You like vanilla for a softer look? Yeah, like I would, I don't know, like I would use vanilla for like a baby card or like, I don't know. It's just such a, a softer, more rustic look too. So here I just have, I don't know what people do with these small little post-its, but for some reason they always come in like planners and notebooks and stuff like that. I use them to hold my, um, my dies onto the cardstock. So there's our pumpkin, and where did, here it is, our little floral piece go. So are you guys tea drinkers or are you coffee drinkers or neither? Like I thought the tea was like a super cute idea, but honestly, I'm not a tea drinker. Um, I like cold tea. I'm not a hot beverage drinker. I should say that. Um, so I'm really not like I like cold tea. Um, so I would almost like make it hot, let it sit on the counter and then maybe drink it warm. But otherwise, I'm not really like a hot drinker, hot tea drinker. Now, my mom is. Um, she drinks hot tea all the time. Um, and okay, now we're going to color in our flowers so we can talk about tea and coffee and caffeine um, while coloring because we all know how long that takes. So for my sunflower, I used um, dark daffodil. And I didn't really do any blending with these. I really just colored yeah, so my caffeine comes from um, Dr. Pepper Zero. Which that has changed over the years. Um, in high school, I was a huge Mountain Dew drinker. Now I'm just like, whoa, Mountain Dew. It's so sweet. Um, but then again, if I tell you I drink ski, then you'll also say, well, that's super sweet. But that's a, um, that's like a local soda. And I drank that a lot whenever I was pregnant with Alex. I kind of gave up all soda-ish um, whenever I was pregnant with Claire because, funny story, I um, absolutely hate the fake sugar in a diet or a zero um, soda when I'm pregnant. So I don't know if that's just my body's way of saying, hey, let's be healthy, you have a baby in you, um, or what it is. But yeah, absolutely hated it the second I got pregnant. Um, and so, like I said, with Claire, I don't really remember drinking much. Like, I think I had like random sips of Brad's, um, but otherwise I just drank water. And then I think maybe I drank, um, I drank a lot of lemonade. I loved lemonade with Alex as well. Um, but with Alex, I still needed the caffeine to try to keep up with Claire. And so I ended up drinking a lot of ski. I had a ski the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Why did I stop drinking this? Um, because I haven't had a ski in forever. Does anybody else always have to like look at the sample or like look at something to be like, did I get it all? Did I not? Or like you stop and then you come back to it because you're like, okay, I don't know what that is. 
For the centers, I actually used um, crumb cake, and you could use either the dark or the light crumb cake for the center of your sunflowers. On one of the other cards, I actually used orange, so that's also a possibility. And then for the greenery, I used both light and dark mossy meadow. Um, so that is um, like you could do like a few of them in light and a few of them in dark just to add like a little extra, um, sh you know, shading, coloring, whatever you want to call it. Julie, you're a coffee drinker. Do you drink like fufu coffee or um, or do you drink like just black coffee? And by fufu coffee, I mean like, I don't know, like a latte or like something like that. I'll be honest, I've never had one. I would love to try it. I really, oop, that's supposed to be purple. Um, I would love to try it, but like I'm not going to go to Starbucks and ask for like a $5 drink that I'm like 98% sure I'm not going to like. But I don't know. Maybe I would like it. But yeah, I, I don't know. Coffee is bitter and I'm not a fan. That's why I'm like, maybe I should try something like foo foo -y. Um, But like I almost just want to like take a sip of somebody else's. And I get so nervous ordering. I don't know why. So whenever I do go to Starbucks, because um, I've like met people there at Starbucks and, um, and hung out and stuff, then I would always get in the here's where I get like so nervous. Um, I get a, um, what is it? Like, it's a Tezo tea lemonade with sweetener. Something like that. Um, and then you drink just black coffee. That's crazy. Um, dark fresh freesia is my pop of purple that I used. Um, I just like how this kind of just adds a different... Um, pop a different look instead of all those fall colors that like little pop of something different so I used fresh freesia which is just a nice fabulous purple you could always use a red or an orange or a blue or something like that but it just adds a little bit um a little bit extra to it and then now it's time to just assemble all of those. And all of those are on with dimensionals. And, um, and I just want to show you how this like interlocks with your pumpkin. So see how it just kind of goes like right, right there. And it interlocks like oh so fabulously. So I sort of like interlocked that together and then turned it over and put dimensionals on that overlap to help secure it together. And then just keep putting dimensionals on. Um, my mom drinks black coffee whenever she drinks coffee. So does my dad and my brother. My whole family drinks coffee. Um, I, I'm just, I don't know. Like, we don't even have, actually, I take that back. We do have coffee in the house. Brad has randomly made, like, kind of like foo foo -y drinks where he, like, makes coffee and then adds, like, milk and creamer and all this stuff to it um, and then drinks it cold. But he has, he's he bought, like, a cold brew, um, like, coffee. So I guess technically we do have coffee in the house, but I don't think anybody who's a coffee drinker would like it. Color the stem on the pumpkin. Um, oh, like color it dark rather than the Cajun craze. Oh, you certainly could. Yeah. Oh, I still have another one. Okay. So now I'm going to add this. You could also cover it up completely um, with your little floral image too if you really like didn't like it like that. So this is going to go like right there. And then we're going to add dimensionals, but we only want to add dimensionals to the right-hand side of our leaf because the left-hand side is going to be on top of our pumpkin. And then I'm going to make sure to slip this leaf slightly underneath that floral image so that you can't see that hole. Ooh, I have a dimensional right there. So that, there, it'll it can still go like that. So, um, and then that way you don't see that there's those, um, those little bubbles on there. 
bubbles. What am I talking about? The, um, the hole. Okay, so we want to do this side. The hole for where you would do um, string for like a tag or something. So I'm just adding dimensionals to the right hand side. I'm going to slide, slide it under until you can't see the hole there and then press. And so there we have that leaf that says hello. Let's see if the one I stamped at the beginning, yeah, it's still slightly wet. So I'm just saying that if you're stamping along with me and um, double check that your leaf is dry before you start like manhandling it and putting it on because I don't want you to smudge it. Don't ask me why. Um, but it's the amber leaves and um, golden embellishments. It's sort of like a pack that comes together with a whole bunch of these leaves. Here's another leaf that says you are blessed. I use this on the little... Um, the little thank you cards that went in all of my card packets. And then I just put um, one of the rhinestones over the top of it, that hole for a quick and simple card. So, um, so yeah, now I'm just going to add a few of these all around. So that's where um, these come in, like I said, that joint package with the little um, leaf tags and then these fabulous jewels to go along with that. And then we still have the inside of our card, which uses uh, the crumb cake. Do you, Denise, do you drink black coffee or do you um, foo foo it up? Oh, I remember I did this um, card differently on the inside. I stamped a pumpkin, I'm pretty sure. Oop. Cajun craze is like the perfect fall color. See, I stamped a pumpkin and then did two of those lines. I, I forgot about that. And so I ended up, I just did the lines on this one. And this one is really close to the edge. But you know what? It really doesn't matter. How often do I change the plates on my cut and emboss? You've never replaced yours yet. Um, okay, so that is a hard question because it kind of depends on how often you use it. So um, I um, am obviously cutting for classes and things like that. So I tend to use mine a lot. And, um, and sometimes I go through a plate... I mean, I, I don't even know that I could put like a timeline on it. Six months, maybe? I don't I don't know. Um, it just kind of depends on how much I'm die cutting. Some cards I die cut a lot. And then, of course, like I'm not doing as many classes um, with the two kids and um, ever since COVID and everything. So I don't feel like I'm changing them out as often. Um, but like it just it really just kind of depends on um, on how often you use it. I need my Cajun Craze ink pad that I went ahead and covered up. Hi, babe. Are you going to bed now? Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to um, stamp right over this splotch with a pumpkin, and I don't think anyone will ever notice. Nope, not at all. And then I'm going to stamp that, um, that line like I did um, in that original card. So there we have card number three. Say hi, baby. I love you. I'll be done soon. Go up and read stories. Go read that crazy Johnny. Oh, yeah, Skippity John Jones book. Okay. I'll be up in a little bit. I love you. So this is card number three. And you can then vote which card you guys like the best. Card number two. Card number one. So we have one flowers, two, the... Um, the tea bag or three, the pumpkin and the flowers and the leaves. It's everything. Pumpkins, leaves, flowers. I love the way that envelope is. It's just so fabulous. 
And then the inside. This one coordinates better with the envelope um, because I did the pumpkin and everything. I forgot on that. So it's kind of simple, but still fabulous. Yeah, I'll be honest. Um, I typically don't even use Cajun Craze or Crushed Curry. Um, uh, pumpkin pie, like all of those are like my fall colors and fall is over and then boom, I never use those colors until the next fall. You're still loving the first card? You like them all, Angie? Oh, well, you guys are all fabulous. Okay, the next card is the Mossy Meadow card. So if you have your card kit, you can always get out the Mossy Meadow card if you're following along and stamping. Card number three is your favorite, Kathy. I know, I think I really like that one. There's just something about the different layers and the pieces and the rustic and something, something about it I really like. But it's not one that I would make a ton of necessarily, um, mostly because of the coloring. This one I feel like I would make a little bit more of because even though there's the die cutting, then um, I don't know. Well, there's a lot of die cutting on this one. I don't know. I would make equal amounts of both and so that I'm not overdoing one versus another. Um, but yeah, so this one um, has the fabulous die cutting and I don't know if you guys can see it very well on camera, but the pumpkin and the stem actually have texture to them. So it's super fun. Um, it's sort of like a, I don't know, like a fungus look. <laughs> Tree bark or something like that. It just, it looks kind of weird, but, um, but it is a super fun texture. Also, Denise, I don't know if I officially gave you like a true answer. And I don't mean to like um, skirt around it or anything. I just, um, I just don't know if I have a good answer on on how long one lasts. Like I will say I bought a new set of um, of the mini plates and I just haven't changed them. Like I just haven't officially said, okay, you are done. I'm tossing you. So I don't know. I will show you what I mean. This top one doesn't really get like pressed that much except for the pumpkin that Brad was like, whoops, I... He put the die in upside down, so it didn't even die cut the cardstock. But this one is well-loved. But, like, it's well-loved, but it doesn't mean it's dead yet. Like, it's still useful. But, like, I don't know. I got more because I was like, I don't know, it might be, like, on its way out. So, who knows? So, I have one, like, perfectly nice clean one for on top, and then the messy one is on the bottom. Is it time to let it go? Maybe. If not, I don't know. Ooh, in foils? I bet it looks stunning in foils. Okay, so for this one, I actually stamped the leaf and the sunflower onto um, very vanilla in mossy meadow. So here's my sunflower. And I will say maybe it's because my mossy meadow seems a little bit uh, juicy, but I wanted a little lighter of a leaf. So I stamped off once, possibly you could stamp off even twice. So I'm going to show you. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. So I think you could easily go two or three for your project. Unless you really like that bold, dark leaf. And that is perfectly fine as well. So now I have my leaf and my flower that I can die cut out. Leaf. Flower. And then there's also a ton of little fun sprigs. Mm. 
and you can always decide which one you like the best. That's just a mess. <laughs> okay, so here's my leaf. And I lost the flower. Here it is. And now I will say the flower is kind of tricky to find the top, the bottom. How does it go? Not like that. Ooh, there it is. It's so weird. The stamp room, um, my stamp room down here is in our basement and it's the weather in our basement is like none other. <laughs> like I feel like it is so warm down here, like warmer down here than it is upstairs. And it's also different outside. Like outside it's like 60 in our house is like 68 and down here I don't even know what it is but it feels so warm and I think it's probably just because it's so like stuffy because like our air conditioner is not running but we don't have the heat on um but we don't have the windows open so it's just kind of like a hot mess of everything and it just kind of gets stuffy because it definitely feels warm down here Okay, so now I'm die cutting my two pumpkin pieces in very vanilla. Kathy, yes, that is a great idea. If your stamp pad is too juicy, you can always um, spread the ink out or um, like push it off to a side and then make it a little bit more even by using either a bone folder or a spoon. Um, which that's like I have the craziest things down in my stamp room. I have forks for fork bows. I have spoons for doing just that with my ink. I have, um, I thought there was another weird thing over there, but I don't see it. It might be down um, in it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I do have a lot of weird things in my stamp room for those exact reasons but yeah I kind of think that it's a little less juicy now that um, I had the stamp class and people were using it and stuff so that helped um, I'm just gonna do a few of these just because I have this whole scrap piece and then I can decide there's like three different like filigree tendrils uh, for your pumpkin. So you can really decide which one you want. I will say I um, I thought, well, I need to use my adhesive sheets on these tendrils because they're so delicate and how am I gonna put adhesive on there? But then I realized I actually just tucked it in between the stem and the pumpkin and have it sort of hanging out like 3D. So I didn't really want to put adhesive tape on it because I didn't want it to be smashed like flat on my pumpkin. I kind of wanted it to look a little bit like, you know, just hanging out there. And it's nice and secure still, so I wasn't worried about that. And then the last piece is our pumpkin stem, which is this one. And I did that in early espresso. So yeah, see this one has a lot of um, die cutting to it. So I don't know. Do you prefer die cutting or do you prefer coloring? That is the question. Do you prefer to die cut or color? Okay. So we have a piece of designer paper and we're gonna create banner tips in it. So I'm just cutting up in the center and then I'm cutting from that corner to 
that center cut from the corner to the center cut. Okay, so there we have our banner tips. And then depending on how much you do your banner tips, you can like pull this in real far. You can make it go all the way across. You can kind of do it however you wish. And then you can just cut off the excess if you happen to have any sort of excess um, designer paper there. So I'm just going to place that down and then trim off the excess here. And then this can go onto my card front. So then the next thing that we want to do is we want to stamp our greeting. I use You Are Such a Blessing, and I stamped that in Early Espresso. So this one, like, you can, like, some might not like to stamp after they've already assembled it, just in case they make a mistake. The other thing is you can also kind of, like, place your pumpkin down to sort of get, like, an idea of where you want to stamp. Um, I wouldn't assemble it completely just because it might get in the way since it is put on with dimensionals, but sort of place it and then go, oh, I'm going to stamp here and then maybe move it and then stamp. You are such a blessing and that's super crooked, but I'm going with it. It's okay. If anybody's going to say your greeting is crooked on this super cute card, then they're not getting a super cute card next time. That's how I see it. Okay. So I did dimensionals on both of these layers of the pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add dimensionals to the back of the big one. Yeah, a lot of dimensionals, I know. You'd rather spend money <laughs> on fun stamp stuff than plates. I completely agree, which is why I tend to like forget to buy them. And then I'm like, oh, I really need one. Now, one of the things, um, if we can just add reason number 7,322 on why I love my mini is because the plates do not curl, or at least they have yet to curl on me. Um, whereas on my big machine, um, those things curl like a cereal bowl, like after the fifth time I use it, it seems like. Um, and so those I get frustrated and I end up buying new ones for the big one faster than I have for this little one. Um, just because the cereal bowl is so annoying. Um, and they these don't bow on the little one. So I don't know if it's just the size and the pressure or what it is, um, but... Yeah, like I said, reason number 7,000 of why I love um, my mini. Okay, so this is the stem, and it's just going to kind of like go down underneath a little bit, and I'm going to add a dimensional to that. But I also feel like I want like a dimensional to hold that on. So I really should have set that down before I added those. So there, I'm just gonna add a mini. So my stem is like down there. The stem kind of just goes to where it like flares out. It's gonna go as low as that flare out. But I'm gonna put the other one on top of it a little bit. So even though it doesn't go down all the way and you can see some of that flare out, it'll be okay. 
So this is going to go on to my card here. And then I have this middle panel, but this is where I'm going to set the little tendril, like right here. And then set that middle one right there. So the tendril is like being held on in between the big layer of the pumpkin and that small inside layer. I just, it's just smashed between those with that Stampin' Dimensional. And then it just kind of floats out like nice and 3D and everything. Super fabulous. So then we also have our green leaf. which I'm just going to add like right here. And then we actually still need to color our, um, our little sunflower. So again, I'm using the dark daffodil delight for the petals. And then, like I said, for this one, I don't know why, but I used uh, pumpkin pie for the center. I don't know, maybe this one I'll use crumb cake and see what it looks like. Looks more like a sunflower now. <laughs> so the pumpkin is kind of embossed. Um, it's really hard to tell, um, but the pumpkin is embossed with the die already. You know what? You might be able to tell on the die better than on the cardstock. See how the die has that like rough look? It's not just a solid pumpkin. So all of those little rough pieces are the texture that it gives you. So like, can you see it? There's like a delay from my camera. So like, I can't tell whether you can super, okay, wait, here we go. Maybe, I don't feel like you can see it on camera. Shout out once you can see it. Like, I don't feel like you can see it. I did a different one. I actually did a leaf. Well, but I did it in white. So what I did is I, I die cut this in white and then I die cut a leaf out of it to try to get a textured leaf. But I don't know. You can see it better on the die, yeah. Like, so you can see it on the die that there's the texture. So I did try to create a textured leaf um, for a project, but I ended up not using the textured leaf. But if you wanted to um, die cut this for the texture, then die cut that same piece with the leaf die cut or the flower die cut. Um, then you can always do that and then you have a textured leaf. Okay, um, now we're just gonna add some of those um, rustic metallic dots again to this one. And I did one on the leaf and then two others. I don't know where. There we go. And then for the inside on this one, I just did the dash and the swirl again on that piece of crumb cake in early espresso. I'm just going to mix it up. I'm like trying to think of like different ways to use this. This one makes me super nervous because it's like the same image twice on every corner. You got this, Laura. You got this, Laura. Ah, yay. So that's just a different way to use it. And I'll add some of those dashes to my envelope as well. No naked card insides or envelopes. 
I have um, a stamper friend who's very against naked envelopes. Ooh, I smeared a little because I decided to move it at the last minute. That's okay. Anytime I mess up an envelope, I'm not that concerned. I feel like I can blame it on the post office, right? Like, oh, a smudge from the machine or like a dirty mark or something like that. So anyway, here is the back panel. And I have that little like smudge over here. And then the front. So here is card number four. You are such a blessing. So now you guys can cast your vote on card number four, card number three, card number two, or card number one on which one you guys like the most. And we will get started on card number five, the fifth and final card. And this one I went rogue and I decided to bring in some purple for this fabulous fun fold card. It's hard to choose, you like them all? Well, I love that. So this one I kind of assembled and then I was like, oh, I think I would have done that a little differently. And then I did this as, um, as an in-person class as well as this online class. And everybody did theirs different at the in-person class. And I took pictures of all of them because I was like, oh, I love it. I love all of them. Everybody did theirs differently and it was fabulous. So um, I would have done mine differently and I would have done the hello on the front and the pumpkin on the inside because I feel like it's like decoration words words and it should be words decoration words I don't know maybe maybe not um but I do really like that pumpkin on the front the other thing um that I found weird is the rich razzleberry onto rich razzleberry almost looks brown here and since I went with black with the designer paper and the matte dots then I feel like I mixed brown and black and eh not a fan of that but um I'm not a fan of mixed metals that much either, so don't ask me. I'm more of like a black girl over brown, though. Like, I don't like brown shoes. I, I hardly, like, I do have a pair of tan or, like, taupe shoes, um, and I do like them, but I don't wear them as often, and Brad's always like, ew. Um, but, yeah, I always like a good black sandal, black, like, strappy shoe, black pump, something like that. I don't know. I just like black better. The other thing is, is that the designer paper is black and white on one side and printed on the other side. And I had some of the girls at the um, in-person class use the, um, the, the printed colorful side versus the black and white side. So again, that's a totally different look that you could do. And... Um, and yeah, you could really do this card totally different. Oh, Kathy, what are you so excited about? The purple or just the fun fold or all of it? <laughs> okay, so this uses a piece of rich razzleberry. It is five and a half by 11. And then I have it all scored. And you're going to do it like a mountain valley fold. So here's the biggest section. So we're going to fold up. And we want to make sure that we get that nice strong crease. And then back for our mountain. And then our valley. And then our mountain. So we're pretty much like accordion all of it. Oh, I'm so happy. I love that. So we have Mountain Valley, Mountain Valley, or the letter M, if you can see the M there. The M with a tail. Okay. 
And then now it's a lot of layers and a lot of decorations. So first we're gonna start with that piece of um, Cajun craze on the background. And I'm out of adhesive again. This one might get me through the last of the class. <laughs> So this one goes on that back panel with a nice quarter inch all around. And then for our Mountain Valley, we have those designer series paper pieces. So you can choose um, which ones you want to do. I did every other one. This time I'm going to do the more white as the first one. Let me know if you um, if you would like to do it in the color or whether you think the black and white is fabulous. Or if you have this kit and you're making it right along with me right now, are you doing yours in black and white or are you doing yours in color? You are kidding me. I'm out of this one too. This one. Oh no, that's that one that's being weird. This one will get me through. There's a whole bunch left. I also have a whole bunch of like miscellaneous um, dimensional pieces that I need to use all the trim edge. So yeah, it's definitely like clean up adhesive time. <laughs> Okay, so now we have all of our base. And then we have our piece of crushed curry that is scored already for us. So we're going to fold on that score line and do it nice and tight. And what we want to do is we want to put adhesive, my favorite, tear and tape, on the very outside edge. So we're gonna put some here. And some here. And then the way that I'm going to assemble this, don't panic, it'll be okay. Oh wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. I just remembered. This happened to be a happy coincidence in my original card. And then whenever I was doing it in class, I forgot to mention it. And one of the girls, I was like, oh, well, I lined mine up on the corners of the little foo-foos. And she's like, oh, I wish I would have known that. My foo-foos are in too far. So I am telling you now, I'm going to stamp the little foo-foos in Rich Razzleberry on those corners of our big piece of Whisper White. So these are all dirty right now. Cajun craze. Where, oh, here's the line one, right at my elbow. That's dangerous. Okay. So I'm going to do the foo-foos. The post office, they'll never know. See? And I'm gonna do it like pretty tight in that corner. One, two, and four are in the lead. And where will five land? Okay, so there's the four foo-foos that are in the corners. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to the back. Oh, I also forgot my greeting. The greeting is, you're such a blessing. And I stamped that in Memento Black, but you could also stamp that in uh, Rich Razzleberry. I think I might just stamp it in Rich Razzleberry. You are such a blessing. Okay. 
Now, we're going to take this, all the detail and colors, yeah, and the bottom piece is going to go to the inside of all of our mountain valleys, okay? So we're going to, like, press all the mountain valleys on top of that. And then the top of it is going to fold to the very top of our mountain valleys. So now I'm just going to place the corners, the corners into the foo-foos, like lined up. And then I'm going to hold my mountain valley down, add a little bit of adhesive along the edge here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just along the edge. You like the color more? And then what I'm going to do is peel off the adhesive. Peel off the adhesive tape, I guess. And I'm just going to close it, okay? Close it. It is where it is. I don't care if it's not perfectly lined up over here. Um, I have it nice and lined up on this side, and so it just, it is what it is. It's nice and flat. It's going to fit in the envelope perfectly. We're good. Now, I'm going to open it to the back of all those mountain valleys. Remember, all those mountain valleys are on the inside there. And I'm going to do the same thing. So, I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to the inside closest to the the crushed curry, and then this is the outside. So the inside, and then this is gonna hit the outside. We're gonna take the paper backing off, and what we're going to do is we're just going to close this nice and flat. I don't wanna hold it up and try to do something funky, or otherwise it might not lay flat. It'll be a little wonky. So now we're just going to simply close it. And then now we have that fabulous mountain valley, mountain valley. All the mountains. Super gorgeous card. It's definitely one for the mantle, for the office desk, for, you know, all the displaying. Super fabulous. So now we just need to decorate these two panels. So I have a layer of white as well as a layer of um, the rich razzleberry. And why do I feel like these, this is not the right size. It is like a hair too big. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? <gasps> I lost a die on the floor. Like I heard it jingle. And I hope it was just one of them. And I hope I remember to look for them again later. So there's one of the dies. I hope I can find the other one later. Okay, so now we have um, the white panel and the rich razzleberry panel. And we can decorate those as much as we want. And however we want. This is where I kind of struggled on keeping the colors. Um, if I did this with the designer paper on the other side, I could have like done so many fun colors. I could have used the Cajun craze. I could have added in some yellows and oranges and reds and fabulousness. Um, but then I ended up wanting to do mine with just that purple. And so I felt a little bit more like restricted. So I'm going to add the floral, it's kind of hanging off, but the floral to the top corner and the bottom corner. And then I did that little line image. And this one says, hello. Yep, I still need to clean that one off. 
So this one I do kind of wish I did do um, some of the colors because it would give um, a lot more possibility and stuff. I'm going to stamp this one actually in black instead of doing it all so rich razzleberry. Um, I will um, share the cards that were made at, um, at the stamp class so that you can see what the colored uh, images kind of look like or what other options are for this one. So this time I'm actually gonna put the hello at the very front and I'm gonna do that, um, the white pumpkin on the purple on the inside. So I'm also going to do this line in black rather than the rich razzleberry so that it doesn't turn out kind of brown. And then, let's see, I think I'm done with the black ink. So I can cover that up. And then I just need to do my pumpkin. And I also did the filigree on this one, the same as the last one where um, I just smashed it between the two pumpkin layers uh, and didn't worry about, um, about having it have a ton of adhesive on it. And then I also forgot my stem, which is the one that flew to the ground. And I have a little white tendril. I also had somebody I wanna say wanted a green tendril on their white pumpkin. And that was super fabulous. Maybe I will do a green tendril on this one. Just to add that extra like pop of color. And I did do, didn't I do extra greens? Yes. Here's an extra green one. That one seems weird. I'm gonna use this one. Sorry, I called you weird, little tendril. Okay, so I did, um, the back pumpkin is flat. So we're just gonna add, add the stem down, add the pumpkin right there where it starts to flare out. And then we're gonna do the green tendril, like right there, and then add the top piece of the pumpkin. Now, if you're ever thinking, I wish the pumpkin was a little bit fatter, uh, you can certainly do that. Just cut it in half, pop it out just a little bit. As long as this center piece is going to cover, then you'll be just fine. Um, popping that out a little bit, as long as it doesn't go so wide that this is going to show, like the edges are gonna show. So you can always make your pumpkin a little bit wider uh, using this piece as your cover up. And there I have the little green tendril hanging out. Like I said, that's what one of the girls did um, at stamp class, and I thought it was a fabulous idea. And so here I am using her little idea, and it adds just that little hair of a pop of color. And then I did uh, include some black matte dots in the card kits. I almost feel like I'm gonna put the black matte dots on the front versus um, on that pumpkin layer just to add a little texture to the front. And also um, because I don't want it to smash up underneath. So there is card number five with the super fun fold. And then let's see, what should we do? I feel like I wanna do the florals on my envelope.
and I'm going to do that little line. Look how fabulous that looks. I love it. Isn't that amazing? And then I did the back lip. Oh, so cool. So here is card number five. Now you guys can officially cast your vote as to which card you guys love the most. Cards one through five. I don't want to get any of our fabulous cards all inky, so I'm going to put those away. So here we have card number five, the Rich Razzleberry. And here's what the original looked like, a little bit different. So different options there. Ooh, a little tickle. Card number four, you are such a blessing. Card number three is the pumpkin and the leaf. Card number two is the, um, the breakfast, breakfast tea. It's not a breakfast card. The breakfast tea, the tea bag. And then card number one with the flowers. I don't know, are all of these in there? Number five? Yay. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun stamping with you guys tonight. I hope you guys learned a lot of fun tips and tricks just on general stamping, as well as some great ideas for fall. I had so much fun stamping with you. You can always, um, like I said, you can always download the PDF tutorial um, from my Etsy shop. I do have that link in the description. It is etsy.com slash shop slash Laura's stamp pad. Um, but you can also get the kit. I do still have um, like two or three of the pre-cut card stock kits. Um, so you can always purchase one of those. Just let me know in the comments because I don't think it's in the description. Otherwise, I plan on putting it in the description after uh, this video is all done. I will put that in there um, until if if you come back to this like a couple days later and uh, the link no longer works, it's probably because I shut it off uh, because I've sold out. But um, very rarely do I actually still have kits available when it's time to do the class. So uh, take advantage of me still having some of those kits available. The next month's class will be using the candy cane bundle. So I'm so excited about that. We're getting into Christmas cards and all the fun uh, that that brings. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate all of your love and support. Love, hugs, and prayers to all of you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!